Hey church, we're so thankful to have you join us wherever you are joining us from. And we're excited about what God is doing in your life. And I know some may be even watching this in the context of a life group. And we're excited that you get to share community with each other. And for those of you who might be watching this outside of community, I would love to encourage you to get in community, even if it's inviting people who may be new to our church or new to even maybe Christianity to watch these things together and to discuss them uh, in the context of a group uh, to grow in our faith together. You know, we'll never grow better than when we're growing together. Uh, Jesus, when he sent the disciples out, he sent them in community. And I want you uh, to not do church alone. Get community, even if it's bringing that community to your house to watch this video and watch this service together. Uh, so we're studying the subject of prophecy. Uh, and out of this, uh, what we're talking about specifically in these sessions is how to increase our awareness of prophecy how to increase our capacity to have God speak to us, but also how to increase our capacity to have God speak through us. And so we've given some tips over the past couple of weeks. And what I want to do in this session is to just share another tip with you and to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. And so let's take a moment to pray. Uh, and I'll pray for you, but I want to encourage you to open up your heart. And let's just take a moment and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us even in this lesson. Uh, Father, we come before you today and we just thank you for uh, this moment that we know we have so many people from all over the world who are connecting with this. And Father, what we ask is that your Holy Spirit speaks to us. Let him speak to us as individuals. Let him speak through me into the hearts of these people. And Father, we thank you uh, that your Holy Spirit is ever more real and present in our hearts and in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so to begin, uh, I want to talk out of the book of Mark. Uh, so if you can open up your Bibles, if you have them with me to the book of Mark, we're going to look at Mark chapter 10. Uh, and we're going to read a passage of scripture that I'm sure is very familiar with you, but we want to see it in the context of what I'm talking about. Mark chapter 10 and verse number 17. Uh, so here Jesus is going to have an encounter with someone and you're going to see a gift of the spirit in operation. And there's um, a key here that when you meditate on this verse, see why this gift of the Spirit was in operation in the life of Jesus. And I want to encourage you to do this more so that the gift of prophecy can be in operation in your life at a greater capacity as well. Let's look at it together. Mark chapter 10, verse number 17. It said, And when he was gone forth uh, into the way, there came one running and kneeling to him. Uh, that's interesting. Like you can see devotion and love to the Lord. And he asked him, and he said, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why do you call me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. Uh, you know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor your father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all of these I have observed from my youth. Now Jesus is about to have a gift of the Spirit in operation. This is a word of knowledge. Uh, where uh, a word of wisdom can see into the future of I see these kind of things playing out into the future. The word of wisdom knows something that is going on in the life of someone in the present or something that is going on in their life in the past. And so we're about to see Jesus have a word of knowledge and watch how he does this. Um, and this is very interesting to me. Uh, verse 21, then Jesus, and this is our point for today's lesson, beholding him, loved him. He looked on him with love and said unto him, one thing you lack, uh, and notice he's about to get very specific, and this is what the Holy Spirit does. Where, where church is for everyone, um, the Holy Spirit is personal. And so when the Holy Spirit begins speaking to your heart, he speaks right to you. One thing you lack, one thing you need to do. In church, it's like, hey, we all need to forgive and we all need to give and we all need to tithe or whatever it may be. But when the Holy Spirit is speaking in that church and through that minister, you have something dealing with your heart of something you need to do. And so this is a very specific word. It's a gift of the Spirit. Uh, it's going to go into the hearts uh, of the, the person who hears it, and it's going to identify something specifically in their life. 
And it says, one thing you lack, go sell whatever you have, give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come and take up your cross and follow me. And that man, it says, went away sad uh, and saying uh, that he was sad and he went away grieved for he had great possessions. And so we didn't know this man had great possessions, uh, but Jesus came in and saw it in his heart that not only did he have great possessions, but great possessions had him. And he wants to confront with a word of wisdom, with prophecy in motion, with God speaking to man in motion, uh, this one issue in this individual's heart. And he does it with a word of knowledge. He does it with prophecy. And, and once again, somebody says, well, I thought prophecy was predicting the future. Well, that can be a part of prophecy. But prophecy is just simply where you stop talking and God starts talking through you. Uh, it's where uh, God begins to express himself through man and uh, takes on our vocal cords and begins to speak through us. And uh, we see this played out here. But did you notice how it played out here? That before Jesus gives this word, he has this moment of connection with the person he's giving it to. And it said, and behold, Jesus looked on him and loved him. Did you know that so many people see but don't really look? Uh, how many people uh, yesterday, maybe even today, or this month, have you walked by that you saw but you didn't really look? And I, I wonder if, if we could kind of slow down life enough to see one another, to actually see the waiter or waitress, to see... Uh, the friend, uh, to see the coworker, uh, the employee, the employer, to see our sons and daughters, to see uh, our husbands and our wives, to see them and look on them with love and have the Holy Spirit meet us in that place to give them a word. What, what, what if, just what if, we were walking so slowly through the, the um, gas station? We're filling up with gas and we go in and we walk slow enough to actually look on and to behold um, the person who may be working behind the cash register and behold them with love so that we're sensitive in our hearts to the love God has for them. I wonder if it would increase our capacity to develop a prophetic word for them. Most of the people who I know who are very prophetic and have this gift and operation in their life are very good at this. They slow down to see people. Uh, they slow down to see me. Uh, they slow down to notice me and look on me with love and look on others with love. And the Holy Spirit meets them in that place. I, I was listening to um, a minister uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he was talking about how him and his daughter went on a vacation. And they decided to rent a sea -Doo. And she gets on the back of the sea or jet ski, whatever you call them, where you're from. You know, uh, they get on the back of this thing. It's like a motorcycle for the water. Uh, and uh, get on it. And they're just having the time of their life on the ocean. Like, so much fun. And she's on the back, you know, holding on to him. And she starts to cry out. She's like... Daddy, daddy, stop, you know, stop. And he's thinking like something stung her or there was this life altering event like she's about to fall off and they're in danger. So he was going so fast that when he stopped, it actually kind of drowned the motor a little bit. And they had to, you know, it completely shut down the machine and they had to wait for someone to kind of help them get back. And so he turns around and he's like, what, are you okay? Like, were you about to fall off? Did something uh, like uh, hurt you in some type of way? And she's like, no, my hair was in my eyes and I couldn't see. <laughs> so I wanted you to stop so that you could, uh, I could pull the hair back where I could actually see what we're looking at. And uh, he, of course, was very distraught and a little upset by this. Like, we flooded the motor just so you could see? And he said the Holy Spirit spoke to his heart and dealt with him about that. And he actually preached a message on it. Um, that not that kind of worth flooding the motor for? So that we can see? 
to just stop everything, maybe even so fast that it just completely disrupts life so that we can see people? And one question I would ask with this is, isn't people worth it? Uh, like, it, it, aren't we worth it? Uh, am I not worth it? Uh, is the, the waiter or the waitress not worth it to be seen? Uh, to see their hurts or to see past even their bad behavior, but to really see why they may be acting bad? Like, I, I think that would improve humanity just in general if we didn't just see bad people, but we beheld them. And we didn't just see the bad actions, but we asked ourselves, why are they acting bad? What, what's really going on in my child's life? What's really going on in that person's life? That if we took uh, time to just slow down enough to see, and I, I think it would improve humanity and enrich them, but I also think that the Holy Spirit taps into this. And when we look with the eyes of love, something can kind of come up and arrest our hearts so that we can uh, have that prophetic word and so that God can be demonstrated through them. There's a connection here. In the, the book of Acts, if, and they'll put it up uh, on the screens, in Acts chapter 3 and verse 4, we see a gift of the Spirit in motion where there is a, a healing and it goes outside of the realm of someone else's faith. There was a man laid by a gate expecting to receive money. He wasn't expecting to receive healing. He was expecting to receive money. And yet he walks away healed because a gift of the Spirit is in motion. And a gift of the Spirit is, is, is exercised on his behalf and a gift of healing hits his body. But before this moment, it said that, that Peter and John, when they were walking in to the temple to pray, they beheld him. And you look up that word beheld, it, it means that they, they took their focus and they took it to him. That they weren't just walking so fast <laughs> on their journey and ready to have a spiritual experience for themselves. But they, they took their focus off of themselves, off of where they were going, and they took their focus and they placed it on a man who so many other people had walked by. No one saw some dump some change. But Peter and John gave him the gift of sight to be seen, to be noticed, to be loved, to look deeply upon. And what I love about this story is that when they did, God met them there, such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. And that happened because of a gift of the Spirit, and it happened because of the power and the, the name of Jesus, but it also happened because Peter and John were willing to look at somebody and to really look at somebody who a lot of other people had passed by and never seen. Uh, a couple of, um, well, actually now, gosh, time flies. Um, about... A year and a half ago, maybe even two and a half years ago, I was in a city with my brother-in-law, Ryan, and we were out walking around, and it was a city uh, that you could tell was like in desperate need of Jesus. <laughs> Like there weren't a lot of churches, but there was a lot of carnality, like a lot of carnality. And for about two days, we walked around the city uh, just having a good time. Uh, uh, when I can, for his birthday, I like to take my brother-in-law to uh, different places and to kind of experience those things together and see a basketball game or, you know, something like that. And uh, we're, we're walking through the city and we're incredibly aware and heightened by like the carnality that is in the city. Like there is a sin <laughs> and people are, are happy about it. Uh, and all these types of things. So we're sitting there and we're talking about it. We're talking about it. We're talking about it. And it's like, man, this place needs Jesus. Golly, they need a good church here. Like talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. And we went to dinner uh, on the last night we were there and we're sitting there and I am faced the, the entry, entrance way and he's, we're in a booth and he's faced, you know, the back of the restaurant so I can see people are coming in. And I see this guy walk in and he stops at the table that is uh, behind us. And, and so I can watch all of this play out. My brother-in-law could hear it, but I'm hearing it and seeing it. And he stops and I hear the conversation. He's like, oh, you're a Michigan fan? 
And he's like, yeah. He said, I am. He said, how did you know? He said, well, you had the Michigan hat on. And so I, I recognized the M. So I just determined you were probably either from Michigan or a Michigan fan. Um, and he said, well, actually both. I'm from Michigan and I am a Michigan fan. He's like, that's awesome. And he starts telling a little bit about his story of interaction uh, with Michigan fans because he was a rival fan of another team. And they start, you know, talking about football and those types of things. And then he transitions and he's like, uh, has anyone ever told you about Jesus? <laughs> it's like the conversation right there. Uh, and I uh, asked him, is there anything I can pray with you about in the name of Jesus that Jesus comes in and just um, helps you with? And the guy starts crying and talks about a physical ailment that he had in his body and um, something going on in his family. And um, I watched this guy grab hands with everybody at the table there and pray. And when he said amen, um, the guy who had walked in walked by our table and I flagged him down. I was like, man, that was really neat. I'm like, I haven't seen anybody do that in a long time. Isn't that sad? Can I ask you this question? How many people have asked you randomly if you know Jesus? See, we have this idea that like evangelism is going on all the time, but is it? Uh, like people are asking for prayer all the time, but is it? In fact, a lot of the people and um, who want like this revival type culture, uh, they will set up something for themselves. And like, is it not that the point of revival is for this to leave uh, the upper room and to go out and see people on the highways and the byways and to minister Jesus unto them? And this was like the perfect example of that, of someone who had kind of caught that. And uh, so I, I wanted to commend a brother in the Lord for doing that. And he started telling me his story and like those types of things. But then he walked away and we're eating their dinner. And I, I, I honestly, I got so convicted because here I am. I'm like, I'm eating at the table and the whole week, uh, like I have talked nothing about uh, other than like, man, this place needs Jesus. And man, it needs an outbreak of God. And I had not shared my faith with anyone. And I had not asked anyone if I could pray for them. And, and honestly, things were going so fast that I'm kind of enjoying the vacation that I probably walked by a whole bunch of people that I did not see. And I, I made a decision right there, and I repented to my, my brother-in-law, and I made a decision right there of like, I'm going to pause long enough, even if it means flooding the motor, uh, to get whatever is in front of my eyes out of it so that I can see what is absolutely most precious in this world, and that is people. And man, I want to be better at it. Because as much as I even know about it, I find myself not doing it sometimes. And like I know to do it, and I know that honestly there's nothing my heart wants more than to help people and to have the Holy Spirit help people through me. But isn't it amazing how so much gets in front of our eyes that we don't look on people with the eyes of love? And I wonder what it would do for them if, if we did, but I wonder what also it would do for the Holy Spirit to be able to speak to our hearts. And so I repented. I probably need to do that more, maybe do that daily. And I asked the Lord to like, let me see. Let me see people. And our waitress rocked up. Now, she had already, like, taken our meal and, like, all these types of things. But um, I just looked on her with love and made a decision to actually see her. And I kid you not, it was like God watching over his word with signs following. Um, that as soon as I did, I had a word of knowledge. And I said, I, I, I don't know specifically what you're going through, but I sense you have a debt. And I sense you, you need um, divine intervention for it. And the Lord wants you to know uh, that he uh, is Jehovah Jireh. And I said, that means a God who sees and provides. And I want to leave you a tip in the amount, it was like 320 some odd dollars, something along that line. And she just starts breaking, like just crying. And she said, uh, on the way to work today, 
She said, I sat in my car and she said, I told God, I need a miracle. Her son who was 16 years old and is really, really uh, autistic. And to feed him uh, and to help him cost a lot of money. And she was torn on whether to get him what he needed or paying their electric bill that they were behind on. And their electric bill was the amount that I told her I was going to tip her. These types of things... I want them. And I know, honestly, that they can happen more. Because I know I don't want them more than God wants them. For me, for you, for us. But I think God just needs yielded vessels. Not perfect ones. But just people who will yield. Yield to him but yield to others. Slow down, look, see, behold, love, look with eyes of love, like all these things. I, I think it would make humanity better. But I also think it would increase our sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. And you know why? Because the book of 1 John uh, teaches that God is love. God is love. Love. He doesn't have love. He doesn't love. God is love. So when I'm sensitive to love, I am sensitive to God. But when I am not sensitive to love, I'm lying. And I don't know the truth, John said. If I say I know God. And if I want to know God more in my life, and if I want to have God move through me more in my life, it's as easy as just yielding a little bit more to the love of God that's been shed abroad in our hearts. And releasing that love and, and looking with love and helping people with love. I'm not just giving place to love, but I'm giving place to God. Jesus, beholding him, looking on him, loved him. I want to encourage you to do that. I think you could even get a word for yourself, a prophetic word for yourself, if you really looked at yourself in the mirror with love. And like just took a moment to really see yourself in the mirror and love yourself. But if you, in giving place to that love, couldn't also at the same time, well, you would also at the same time give place to God for God to speak something to you. Let's slow down. I, I want to encourage you in this. Read the book of 1 John. He gives this stunning revelation. And I, I mean that, like literally. The next couple of days, read the book of 1 John. And John gives this stunning revelation that when I don't love, I'm walking in the darkness. And I will not know where I'm going. But if I do love, I am walking in the light because God is also light. And there's no occasion of stumbling that's within me. So prophecy, it could be as simple as us giving more place to love. Because in giving more place to love, I at the same time am giving more place to God. I love you, church. And I thank you for taking the time to connect with us. I can't wait to see you again. And I pray that from the time we meet again, that you have seen God open up a prophetic word for you or someone else. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for each and every person who's watching this. 
And I ask, Father, that you would give us the capacity to yield more to love so that we could yield more to you. And Father, we just thank you that in all these things that you would be glorified and that you would glorify your name and that you would make your Holy Spirit incredibly real to us. And we ask it all, Lord, in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time.